So, how do you bias the modulator? So, you have to bias the modulator. So, you have what is called as a bias T. We talked about bias T even when we are talking about direct modulation system. Bias T is a uh, inductor capacitor circuit which will combine DC and AC. So, bias the mo Maxender modulator at the quadrature. This is this point is called as the quadrature point. And this is your peak point and this is your null point of your modulator. You bias it at the quadrature, drive the signal with almost V pi amplitude. Should I actually do exactly V pi? You see this is a cos square function, this is cos square pi V wave. So, which means it is a nonlinear transfer function. So, your output power is cos square pi V by V pi. So, if your input is, so your, your output is becoming a nonlinear function of the input. So, in practical scenarios, even though you will get a large extinction between the high and the low, uh, if you are using, uh, if you are driving the modulator with a full swing, you do not typically do that, you will operate in the linear regime, which means this swing voltage you will confine to the linear regime of the uh, modulator. Uh, so, drive with a signal of V pi amplitude, optical carrier swings between 0 and the maximum value. Now, this one if you are measuring in terms of optical power, let me just sketch the transfer function once again. Let us say this is P out, it is P out by P in, if I do not do P in, if I do not do P out by P in, if I just plot P out, the corresponding to a voltage V pi you have a minimum and you define what is called as the extinction ratio of the modulator as the ratio between the maximum and minimum. This is similar to defining what is called visibility of fringe in an interferometer. There is a small power that will survive because of incomplete uh, destructive interference and let us say we call that as P out corresponding to 0 state and P out corresponding to 1 state, then P out corresponding to high to the ratio of P out corresponding to low will give you the extinction ratio. And typically commercial modulators come with extinction ratio of uh, approximately uh, not really 30 dB, but anywhere between 20 to 30 dB. Higher the extinction ratio, the better for you, the better would be your depth of modulation. Okay. And insertion loss of the modulator is, guess what the insertion loss. So, you have a P in into the modulator, you take it through the modulator. So, this is the circuit symbol for a modulator. Uh, you get maximum when your output, when your phase difference is 0. So, that is your P out corresponding to 1. Insertion loss defines the difference between the power corresponding to the maximum as compared to the input power. So, you at the output of the modulator, the best power that you got when the phase difference is 0, you have a certain power, but that need not be this identical to the input power because there are losses in the system. So, that is your insertion loss. So, P out corresponding to 1 divided by P in, that is your insertion loss. 10 log of this number is ins insertion loss in decibels. Now, one critical thing, so this is how a Maxender modulator uh, chip would look like. So, this is your input fiber, this input fiber is coupled into the waveguide here, right. So, the one shown in red is the waveguide, so there is a splitter and then there is a combiner and you also see the electrodes. So, these are DC electrodes which can help you to adjust your bias and these are your RF electrodes. So, you will have some voltage between these uh, waveguide some electric field set up between this waveguide and some electric field set up between this waveguide. Okay. And this is your output fiber. One critical thing that is not, we are not going to discuss in detail is uh, polarization dependence. So, typically as I said earlier, this electro optic effect itself is polarization dependent. It is the, the phase change produced for different input polarizations are different. 
So, typically when a modulator is constructed, the crystal is cut in such a way that for a particular input polarization, the electro optic effect is maximum. So, what you need to also do is to put a what is called as a polarization controller. So, you will have a laser which is biased at a specific CW condition bias voltage and then this goes into the modulator and you adjust the polarization controller such that this extinction ratio is maximum because the delta phi is maximum only for specific uh, polarization. Okay. So, when you actually practically use a ma ma Maxander modulator your input input fiber will be a polarization maintaining fiber all what you need to do is so there is a certain preferred polarization for the modulator you need to match the laser polarization with to that of the preferred uh, polarization of the modulator so let's say the modulator accepts x polarization you have to make sure that the laser polarization is also aligned to x polarization to make that alignment you use what is called as a polarization controller which is a three paddle device. So, you can control that. So, every practical Maxander modulator would require this kind of polarization control at the input so that you are maximizing the extinction ratio. Okay. So, this is again about intensity modulation. You can also use this uh, intensity modulation in what is called as a push pull configuration, where you, uh, you see your output is proportional to cos square delta, delta phi divided by 2, where delta phi I repeat is the phase difference between phi 1 and phi 2 where phi 1 is the phase introduced in this, phi 2 is the phase introduced in this arm. And the uh, uh, V that we said earlier, we said that I am applying only a voltage V in, uh, there was no V 1, there was only a voltage V in one of the arms to give a phase shift of delta phi. Now, what if I apply a voltage V 1 in one arm? and V2 in another arm which is equal to minus V1, then what happens? I will get a phi 1, I will get a phi 2 which is equal to minus phi 1. Uh, electro optic effect is a linear effect. So, if apply a negative voltage, the phase is actually negative. Okay. Uh, phase advancement, phase delay both are possible. So, what is the benefit of this configuration? you require only half the voltage to get a phase shift of uh, pi when compared to the previous configuration. One arm is being pushed by phi 1, the other arm is being pushed by negative phi 1. So, that the net phase difference is now becoming uh, 2 phi 1. So, earlier you had to apply a certain voltage to get a phi 1, now you have to apply only half the voltage to get the same uh, phi. So, that is push pull configuration. So, uh, typically all the practical modulators run with push pull configuration. So, you apply V1 and V2. The theory does not change, it is just that the voltage that you would require is only half. The V pi becomes half when compared to a regular modulator uh, in case of a push pull modulator. So, V pi is half of what is required if voltage is applied only in one arm. So, if you see data sheets of modulators, you will have certain modulators with a V pi of 6 volt and 6.5 volt and you will also see modulators where the data sheet says that the V pi is 3 volt and 3.5 volt. So, you can immediately guess that the 6 volt is a single electrode modulator whereas, 3.5 volt is a push pull modulator. Okay, so, this is for on off keying. Uh, sketch the output of the modulator when the bias is V pi and the swing is 2 V pi now. I want you to sketch the output field. It does not matter whether it is push pull or single electrode, you can define everything in terms of V pi. You are biasing it at V pi 
and the swing is 2 v pi. I want you to sketch something like uh, this, you know you had this here bias was v pi by 2, I am saying push this bias to v pi and you swing it over 2 v pi. What do you get? So, constant would you get a constant output? In terms of power would it be a constant? This is what you would get. Your bias is here okay, and you are swinging between 0 and intentionally I have given a ramp for this. So, when your uh, input is high, your output is high, your input is low then also the output is high, but in between the input is going from sorry high to low. So, it is actually crossing this part in terms of field, in terms of intensity it is crossing this. So, during this duration, during this duration it is crossing 0 intensity and it is it is crossing 0 intensity and it is coming back, right. High goes to low, when high goes to low it is crossing this null. So, when high goes to low it is crossing this null. Again low goes to high it is again crossing null. So, remaining 0 to high it is again crossing null. So, which is why in the output power you will have these dips wherever there is a symbol change. But what about the phase? When your input is high, in terms of the electric field you are here, minimum electric field. Power is high, but the field is this. Whereas, when your input is low, again power is high, but the field is plus C. So, in terms of the field you are flipping between minus C to plus C. So, in terms, terms of the phase of the output, you are flipping between pi and 0, okay. And what is this modulation now? It is a BPSK. So, how did you convert a intensity modulator into a phase modulator? You just biased it at the null point and you applied the swing as 2 V pi rather than V pi. So, you just change the operating condition of an intensity modulator to make it work as a phase modulator. Of course, you can use a phase modulator which we had discussed in the beginning where there is only one arm, but you do not really need to have separate modulators for intensity modulation and phase modulation. You can make a intensity modulator work as a phase modulator by doing this. And of course, you can use it in the push pull configuration. Push pull configuration just simply means that whatever voltage you are giving on one electrode, you have to give the negative of that in the other electrode. That is the meaning of push pull configuration. In terms of definition of V pi, it remains the same. For this modulator, whatever is the voltage that you need to apply to bring in a phase change of pi is V pi. And that number is going to be half of what you would have had without the push pull configuration. But method of operation is you just, so typically in push pull or in, in modulators with push pull configuration, this inverters are already inside the modulator. So, you just apply only one voltage, that voltage one part of it will get feed, fed into one electrode, the other part of it with the phase shift will get fed into the other electrode. So, you are not really, you do not really need to apply two RF voltages, you can apply only one voltage and get this push pull operation. Okay. So, this is how you will convert, uh, you will generate BPSK. Okay. 